ericmothertmother.com for the weekend of November 4th and November 5th, 2017. Let's take a look at markets here. We're going to be taking a look at the major U.S. indices and towards the tail end for paid subscribers. We're going to be taking a look at some commodities, take a look at gold, take a look at biotech and financial space. We'll also take a look at Bitcoin ideas and we'll take a look at some breakout ideas and also one or two markets worldwide that look to be turning down in other words some world markets that are already giving us some sell signals so let's go straight to it here we begin with the u.s markets of course with about an hour and a half to close before the end of the week this is how markets are trading let's begin by taking a look at the nasdaq weekly and on the nasdaq weekly here we can see it has refused to drop below 69.1 and even the shallow pullback here was not enough to stop the market the market recovered immediately closed higher for the week in fact we've had six back to back to back to back positive gains and as long as the market is trading above 69.1 on the weekly we know that markets should be sideways at the very worst bullish at best don't forget that on the monthly, of course, we know that the NASDAQ continues to trade above 69.1. And if you take a look here at about six years of monthly data, you can see ever since we moved above 69.1 on the R on the monthly RSI for the NASDAQ, we've gone on a market that has had only one shallow down month for the entire 2017 trading year. So that's that's a characteristic of a market that is holding above 69.1 so as long as we are on the nasdaq here the nasdaq is showing a fresh breakout on the daily and also the nasdaq is back above the 69.1 threshold that is a sign of a very strong market in fact if you zoom in so this is one one year of daily data let's take a look at a closer view and here with a zoomed in version this is three months of daily data and we can see that from a daily view this close we see that now we are staging a fresh daily breakout for the nasdaq so given that we know the breakout level so for the nasdaq as long as it continues holding above six seven two seven point six seven which goes back to this daily close this is a fresh breakout so anything above this price is pretty much suggesting that the market continues higher now that it has had two days of rest and break is breaking out now of course we can also use the same price if short term we see the nasdaq moving back below this price and closing below it that would suggest a failed breakout so for now because the market is breaking out we have to conclude that at this rate as long as markets above this prior daily closing high that we are still in a market that is very strong and should continue trading higher now all these are the positives from the market or takeaways if you're bullish if you take a look at the dow jones and you begin again with the monthly chart for the dow and like the nasdaq the dow has only had one shallow down month for the entire 2017 year and we can see the strength of the rsi in other words once the rsi moved above 69.1 in late 2016 this market has been pretty much grinding to the upside and recently picking up momentum so no surprise there if you take a look at the weekly the weekly continues to confirm this ongoing strength and again this pickup in momentum is a characteristic of a market that is holding above 69.1 and you can see other periods over the last couple of months where the market was trading above 69.1 for example from here to here the market had a nice run because it was above 69.1 and again we had a period where the market held above 69.1 from here to this period here and during that entire period we had a very strong monthly pickup in momentum or weekly pickup in momentum so as long as the Dow continues to hold above 
69.1 we know that markets are pretty much suggesting that they are still very strong with more potential upside now keep in mind generally speaking and i spoke about this in a recent video even if the market was to pull back make a lower high and then start drifting lower even if the rsi does not show strength down the road prices are still going to make an improvement so there's a theory that i believe makes more sense that even with a pullback this is not the high the market is potentially going to have to make a higher high at some point in other words we are going to have to see evidence of improvement in prices while the technicals decline it is the future negative divergence in the rsi that will set the stage for a strong pullback right now even with a pullback we haven't seen negative divergence on the weekly for the Dow, suggesting that down the road in the coming weeks and months, even with a pullback in between, at some point, I think the market has a good chance of recording higher highs because it's the highs it's going to make down the road with declining technical strength that is going to give the biggest sell signal. So right now, we don't see evidence of that. Market continues to be strong. You take a look at the Dow daily. We can see that periods where the market has been bullish over the last year has been periods where the RSI was trading above 69.1 on the daily. You only get any type of a shallow pullback when the market moves back below 69.1. And here we can see another period where the Dow was very bullish day to day because the RSI was above 69.1 until here and another period here where it was very strong day to day until it moved back below the 69.1 threshold and so right now we are in the midst of a movement and we've been holding above the 69.1 threshold so of course we know that within this construct where the dow is trading above 69.1 on the daily rsi this market should continue being strong and that is exactly what has been taking place now same conclusion with the s p 500 so we can save some time here s p 500 on the monthly continues holding above 69.1 on the weekly spx continues holding above 69.1 so we know that while it is above 69.1 we can expect even higher prices if not potentially an extension or an acceleration of the current move as long as the rsi is above 69.1 it might actually be that the market goes on a hyperbolic finish to this current movement take a look at the daily and we can see s p 500 after slight a shallow pullback a very shallow pullback here back below 69.1 it is moving back above the 69.1 threshold as we come towards the end of the trading week so here also on the s p 500 we are moving back above 69.1 that's a sign of a strong market as long as it stays above that value and if we zoom in you'll see that the s p 500 is also breaking out on the daily just like the nasdaq and here we have a three months daily chart if you take the recent daily closing high we traded below that daily closing high but as of friday this is a fresh breakout for the s p 500 and the number to watch there is two five eight one point zero seven in other words as long as we are trading above this number that's a fresh breakout indication of fresh momentum at the same time we can also set an alert if we see that the s p 500 is failing to hold this price in other words a failed breakout might be a sign of a market that is now ready for a pullback but since we haven't seen that break of that number as long as we are trading above this price as we are we have to assume that the market continues to be sideways at worst bullish at best now if you're looking for reasons why the market should start showing a pullback evidence we can find this on the hourly now this is true for pretty much this is the s p 500 Let's take a look at the nasdaq and they're pretty much the same that's the nasdaq 
and let's take a look at the Dow and what you see here is all of these are showing potential for negative divergence that's the Dow showing potential for negative divergence so if you're looking for some signs of impending bearish situation it's, you can see this on the hourly and take a look at the S&P 500 you can see we've been making an improvement to fresh intraday highs but this has come at the expense of this RSI line which as you can see as of right now with about an hour and a half to go before the close the market still has to move above this line if there's going to be a surge higher so this negative divergence this look of a negative divergence could be the initial signs that eventually this market pulls back but keep in mind that's really stretching it because ultimately as long as the daily for the markets are above 69.1 the weeklies are above 69.1 and the monthlies are above 69.1 you're fighting a lot of very strong energy to the upside so while we are trading above 69.1 for example on the monthly we can expect shallow pullbacks but don't expect a big drop in the market until the monthly chart drops back below 69.1 and we can see that on the 30 minute for the S&P 500 there's a line here that is being back tested the previous support line so we broke below here of those highs back below the line of those intraday highs back below the line of those intraday highs and here we seem to be back to test that line so the S&P 500 on the 30 minute and also on the hourly chart is where we start seeing signs of a market that could be running out of energy also based on the 30 minute top side resistance on the RSI is showing that the market is coming back to test this line and maybe the hourly and the 30 minute charts are where you can find evidence of potential market hitting some type of a wall but keep in mind right now it's very difficult to determine whether it's a major high or not because remember at some point we're going to have to see evidence of negative divergence for the S&P 500 again market pulls back RSI pulls back RSI recovers slightly market goes to higher highs now that negative divergence is what we would look for down the road for a potential big top right now we don't see that we only see evidence of shallow pullbacks for now hope that all makes sense in other words it's a strong market until down the road when we see some major market either the monthly the daily or the weekly show us negative divergence now that concludes the free portion of this video have the, have a great weekend ahead and uh, for subscribers let's for paid subscribers to mother.com let's continue on all right let's begin with the financials here and we can see just as we've seen with other markets as long as the financials are holding above 69.1 we can expect that space to be strong if we take a look at the weekly we can see here that there is potential and this potential has been there for a couple of weeks that the market is struggling to hold above this level here this level was the break of the highs here for a shallow pullback we hit that level there for a shallow pullback and here we are again testing this line so market bulls especially bulls in the financial space would want the market to trade above that red line and those who are bearish would like the market to be rejected even as it tries to move above the 69.1 threshold so pretty much the key is whether on the weekly we are trading above 69.1 or we are not but here we can see evidence that if the market chooses to from a visual perspective this might be where it struggles in other words confirmation of resistance here if the market were to turn down from current levels that would be all the bears would want to see in terms of a signal that the market has struggled here suggesting that this is where the price starts stalling if you take a look at the daily for the xlf remember we we're talking about negative divergence before a major top and here we can see an improvement day to day 
but the technicals are forming negative divergence. So this is what I was talking about. This is not the high. That's not the high. There's going to be a future high when we see negative divergence. And right now we see the negative divergence suggesting that this could be an important top as long as the market is now pulling back and as long as the weekly chart stays below 69.1. So if you're looking for any type of evidence of a market that is struggling, here we can see that the daily chart is showing that the market is running out of energy. We made new highs here but did not move above 69.1 on the daily, suggesting that this is a market we can look for more evidence of a pullback that it looks to be impending. Now we can also see this on the hourly. You can see an improvement here to intraday highs, but the hourly charts did not move higher. In other words, even the RSI did not move above 61.8. So this is the pretty much what I call the worst type of negative divergence, suggesting that the financial space could easily be setting up for a pullback based on how the hourly and the daily charts are positioning at the current moment. Let's take a look at the biotech space. Now, I'll have some ideas, uh, breakout ideas, as I mentioned, there'll be some breakout ideas, but with a little bit of caution, and some of them are gonna be in the biotech space. If you take a look at the long-term picture for the BTK, what you see here is we are positive for the month of November, of course, we've been trading for three days now, but there's a line that has always been a problem in my view, which is this line here. Now, this line was the break off the highs of 15 or late 2015 off the highs there. We hit that line a couple months ago and started, pu started pulling back. So I think that line still represents a visual problem in my opinion. So that's something to continue watching. If you take a look at the weekly, the weekly is starting to show support zone based on RSI lows line. That's why you've seen some of those medical medical stocks start moving higher but in the biotech space. And we can see that as long as this line is holding, it gives it reason or it gives the BTK, the biotechnology index, gives it a reason to continue being stable to bullish. If you take a look at the daily, the daily is having a good recovery here, back above the 50-day moving average. But there's a line of caution that I see, which is this line here. Do it like that. So this line gives us this support here, double bottom here, which I drew through it. And what happened here is we broke below here, which is off the highs. And now we are coming back to back test it. So failure to hold above that blue line is what could be a problem. I'll show you another chart, which is gonna be the mining chart, which shows how this happens. In other words, it could be coming back to back test this line and fail. That would be my initial thought. Now keep in mind, there's also, you can also draw a line connecting RSI highs. Oops. You can draw a line like that. So that's one layer of potential resistance. Let me do that one more time. So there's that to consider and then the previous line that I drew, which is being back tested. So the biotech space is yes, is recovering, but it could be a struggle moving above those two lines. And we can see this if we take a look at the hourly. If you take a look at the hourly here, pretty much what's going on is we're coming back to test the break, this break here in the RSI brings it higher, or brings it lower from that point, and then it is tested again. You can see that this became resistance, which gave us the highs there. We are coming back to back test that level. So I think the hourly charts are suggesting this is where it starts struggling. So even though I'm gonna have some biotech ideas, just keep in mind that they need to hold above their buy points if they fail to hold above their buy points, pretty much you want to ignore them because the space could be pulling back. Let's take a look at commodities, but let's begin with taking a look at the dollar. Take a look at the UUP. Now, if you recall, go back to this point here. It looked like the dollar was pretty much poised for much, much lower prices. But we, we suspected 
that the dollar would find a flaw. And my reasoning at the time, if you, if you recall, was pretty much based on this simple analysis that this is where the dollar had started moving high in 2014. And so from this movement here, we had a strong move in the dollar. And my suspicion was that the dollar was coming back to test the same level. And that turned out to be correct because as you can see, the market held. So as long as that, as, as that is where the dollar stopped going lower, we can ex expect the dollar to be sideways at the very worst, right? At the very worst, as long as this line has held, the dollar should be stable. Now, if you take a look at the dollar from a weekly standpoint, this is where it gets confusing is the weekly chart is pretty much coming back to test this break line. So there's a break line. You can say there was here of those highs. We can draw a line from that break point. Should be something like that. And you can see that this became resistance during that top. And here we are back again to test that line. So day to day, it's a little bit dicey. I mean, week to week is dicey. In other words, the dollar would have to clear this line if it is to see higher prices and if the dollar is to put pressure on commodities. If you take a look at the daily, daily chart looks fine. Short term, the daily, the daily chart is moving above a recent daily closing high. So day to day, the dollar is doing well. And we can see here, that if you take a look at the RSI, there was a breakout. And that breakout, it broke out here and has been back tested and that has held. So day to day, I think the dollar is stabilizing. Could actually even see higher prices. We shall see. So if the dollar is stable, it means that commodities are not moving high, right? At the very least, if the dollar is stable, it means commodities are also probably going to be stable to down is my thinking take a look at the gld and if you take a look at the gld from the monthly view you can see the risk here is that if it does not hold the rsi 50 level then it drops just like the last time it dropped below rsi 50 was here for a big price drop so the dollar monthly needs to hold above the 50 rsi level if it is to stay stable at the very worst if it cracks below RSI 50, we can expect a big down month. Now take a look at the weekly chart. And we can see here, you know, yes, there is a likelihood that we have a crossover between the moving averages, which would be bearish, would be similar to this period here. But at the same time, I say this is, it's not an easy read. It's not easy to read what the dollar is doing, what gold is doing right now. Honestly, because you can see a trend line here that has yet to break. You can see that RSI has yet to break this trend line. So the price here and the RSI, the strength indi uh, indicator here, they have not broken. So the dollar is, the go gold, frankly, is it's a tough read. I would say it's stable. Now, if it was to go on and break below this line here, break below this line then that would pretty much bring downside momentum and of course that would coincide with the rsi on the monthly moving below 50 the movement below 50 would suggest that the do the gold sector of the market is about to drop and drop hard at least for that month when it moves below 50 so i would say it's a tough tough one to to read now take a look at the daily and I think the daily captures this very well. We are trading between the 50-day and the 200-day moving average. So lots of indecision. So that's why I'm saying it's a tough read. While we are trading within this range here, you don't know which way the market wants to go. So that's why I say it's a tough one to try and pretty much peg. Uh, we can see on the RSI on the daily, you can draw a line connecting RSI lows. As long as this line is holding, then the market should be, let's call it, stable. Now, if it were to break below that line, then that would be a change and that would suggest lower prices. Now, compare this with the US Dow Jones mining, gold mining index. And what we see here is 
it is pretty much coming back to test this line here which was a prior support line so right now it looks like day to day it is struggling to hold back above that line and there's also another line con con connecting the top side here like that so as long as this is showing resistance I would say it is sideways at best sideways at best bearish at worst but keep in mind again here we are trading between the 50 day and the 200 day moving average which is pretty much telling you there's a lot of indecision let's compare this with the chart for silver let's go and take a look at the silver ETF SLV and again we can see top side resistance we can see rejection at the 50 day and 200 day moving average so net net looks like we are almost you know coiled down but there is a wedge showing indecision there is a price wedge also based on daily close showing indecision so while we are within the wedge and the price and also as far as the RSI is concerned pretty much we don't know which way it wants to go at some point it breaks out or it breaks down and that is silver now compare that with the silver monthly chart and now this is a different way of looking at this it it, it won't take much for the RSI to break out to three year highs and for one of the MACDs to break out to three year highs. So even though it is sideways right now consolidating, what I see here is that it won't take much for the RSI and MACDs to break out to three year highs, and that would be a bullish setup. In other words, if it can clear the recent monthly closing highs, as an example, if, if this SLV can clear these levels, then that would suggest that the RSI and the MACD have, are breaking out to three year highs and that would meet the minimum requirement for the ultimate more the breakout which is what we want to see before a ma major move to the upside now speaking of breakouts in that aspect take a look at crude oil if you take a look at crude oil from a three year monthly chart we can see crude oil right now is trading at three year highs on the RSI And we can see that at least one of the MACDs is trading at three year highs. So crude oil here has an opportunity to continue moving higher as long as it can stay above the recent 2017 monthly closing high. So for crude oil, the level to watch there is it needs to stay above 53.90, which goes back to this monthly closing high. So as long as WTIC is holding above this price, one can play to the upside because the breakout meets the minimum requirement in terms of the RSI and MACDs trading at three-year highs. Now, of course, if it fails to hold above the price, then that is a reason to get out right there. Take a look at USO, which tracks crude oil. And we can also see here that the RSI and MACDs. Now, remember, this is, if you go back a couple of years here, we've seen a major drop in the price of crude oil or the USO. So that's a USO. Take a look at crude oil in the same time period, going back about five years, maybe more we can see that we've seen a major drop in crude oil. But now what we are saying here, what I'm suggesting is this might be where it changes because even for the USO, we are looking at the MACD here. One of the MACDs is right now close to three year highs, if not at three year highs. And the RSI is trading at three year highs. So it meets the minimum requirements there. And you can see that depending on how you look at it, this was a buy point here. But if you miss that, and if you miss the daily buy point at 10.55, which I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, 
so there was a buy point at 10.55 for USO it is trading above that as long as it's holding above this price that's good or you can use either this monthly closing high the next buy point for the USO is a breakout above the monthly closing high for 2017 and the level to watch there is 11.45 so you can set an alert for any breakout above 11.45 or you can use the breakout from November of last year and that would be at a price of 11.72 that's another future breakout or you can use the monthly closing high from 2016 because they are close enough and that would give you an entry level of 11.87 a breakout above any of these prices is valid because we have the RSI and the MACDs already trading at three-year highs now if if for example it moves back below 10.55 if it fails to hold above 10.55 you want to get out of that trade and if it fails to break out above any of these numbers it might suggest that we have run out of momentum the reason why I say that is if you take a look at the weekly chart going back and this is the same true for crude oil let's go back about let's go back about five years you'll see that this is where it has struggled so there's a there's a line right here now this line goes back to the initial break here of that high and we have uniform activity rejection here of that high now this is what I call the uniformity method just in case you are new there should be a link in the description of the video and again just to be clear the method is what I call uniformity so anytime we see uniform action above and below a major line we know it's for a sell signal just like it did here for the highs there and now we are coming back here to test that line so if the breakout fails it would suggest resistance on this line and that's gonna be a major sell signal so just keep an eye on those future breakouts as we discussed on the monthly chart if they can break out above the 11.45 11.72 and 11.87 that would be the next logical entry levels from a breakout perspective now let me share let's take a look at copper now I think if we take a look at the long-term monthly chart for the ETF that tracks the copper miners and yeah, let's zoom in here all right so what we see here is I suspect that this level here around the 61.8 level if it is unable to move above this level here that copper is on my watch list for a bearish move so I'm just sharing that with you that the more we show resistance if we show resistance on this line here the more we show resistance the more I'm gonna be leaning for a pullback as far as copper is concerned the other instrument that I'm going to be looking at for sell signals is the steel sector by way of the ETF SLX and we can see here the SLX has been struggling to hold above this line so the more I see this it would need to turn negative for the month and confirm that it is struggling to hold that level for us to turn bearish so I'm waiting for this to turn down once it turns down and is showing negative for the month in other words confirming resistance on this line then that is where I would start you know suggesting some potential ideas to the downside in the steel sector keep in mind this is where it hit the top of the highs there so I'm watching it for resistance but for this to be confirmed I would need this to stay below and confirm resistance here otherwise there is an opportunity if it chooses to do so there's an opportunity for a breakout a breakout above that line would be something different something it hasn't done since 2011 so a breakout would be bull would be bullish resistance on this line would definitely be bearish and I'm waiting for confirmation of either or for us to determine whether to be long or to be short as far as the steel sectors are concerned 
Now I want to take a quick look at Bitcoin. And we're going to go, this is the close. This is based on, I guess, intraday. But this is the Bitcoin chart based on the NYSE Bitcoin index. And of course, we see here a very strong acceleration over the last couple of weeks and months. So, of course, we don't want to chase. But go back to our, to the other instrument we had been talking about. Remember when I was talking to you about this instrument here? based on the fact that I was suspecting if we move back above 69.1 somewhere here in the 700s maybe even lower I was talking about to watch this for a rebound because if it moves back above 69.1 which is what happened you can get a big move stock has moved from 600 to the 900s right so of course we see momentum in the Bitcoin space now the other instruments I talked about, BTSC, as an example, have not moved. They might not move. They could move. But since the other instruments in the Bitcoin space are moving, I would say you can continue holding on to this instrument here. You can get out as it moves higher. But there could be a spike. The reason why I say there could be a spike is because we've seen this instrument spike. There was a spike here. So let me do that a diff different way. So there was a spike here for this movement, another RSI spike for this movement. So it has a propensity of spiking. So I would continue thinking that if the entire Bitcoin space is bullish, then maybe these instruments also catch some of that momentum and move higher. The other instrument that I still think could be in play. Now remember, you can always set your stop if they don't work out. So the other one I talked about is BT, BTICF. Now this one has yet to move with a space, but we can also see that it has spikes, periods where it spikes. And pretty much what I'm saying here is there could be a spike given that this, the sector right now is behaving like a bubble. And I'm not saying it's a bubble, don't, don't, I'm just saying it's elevated. It might need a pullback, who knows. But this has not moved yet. Now, if you take a look, let me take a look at the daily. And the daily is still showing support around the 200 and moving average. So I would not be surprised that at some point we get a spike. So if you own this, what I'm trying to say, don't give up just because it hasn't moved. It might spike at some point. Now, if it goes on to lose about, let's say, 8%, and I know that that's a tough one because it's a low price stock. But if you goes on to drop below your comfortable stop level you can be stopped out in other words if it drops more than whatever you're comfortable to lose you can get out but as long as you're not losing a lot and you're within the eight percent loss level this thing is worth owning in my opinion because if the entire sector is very strong eventually the strength in the sector is going to also be I guess it's going to catch up with some of the other related names. So I would suspect that there's nothing wrong as long as you're not losing money if you continue holding on to this instrument and the other one that I can see here on uh, that you can trade, BTICF. So as long as either of them is within range, you can own them expecting a spike that might come, might not come, especially if the entire sector starts rolling over, in other words, if the entire sector starts rolling over, then the two names will not work. But as long as the sector itself is still within this range here, we can expect that to suspect that if Bitcoin stays in the 7,000 level, that the other related instruments are also going to be moving higher. I know it's a lot of words, but I'm just saying don't give up on the sector yet especially the two that I mentioned, until we see evidence of a pullback or a sell signal in the entire space. Now, because of time here, and I would like to see whether I can rush this to you before the close of the day, the following are breakout ideas. Now, remember what I said about biotech stocks. They could be struggling around current levels, but we don't know if the biotech space is going to recover beyond current levels. So you can play the breakouts. And here is one. Now that it is breaking out above 28.32, 
you can on this. So the best thing is to on this as long as it stays above 28.32. Should it fail to hold above the price, of course, that would be a failed breakout. You'd want to get out. Let's take a look. I'm going to go through this quickly. The next one is a software related name and it is breaking out. And this one is a little bit extended. I think slightly above our 5% comfort range. So about 5% above our buy point is where we try and um, own this somewhere around here. A little bit extended, but it does meet the minimum requirement. It might still have momentum. I think sometimes you can chase it. It's not very extended is what I'm saying. But even this one here, now that it is above 25.75, needs to stay above that price if it is to see higher prices. And all of these meet the minimum requirements. RSIs and MACDs are at three year highs, if not above 69.1 on the monthly RSI. The next candidate from a breakout perspective is CTRL. And I believe I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but here it is breaking out. The buy point is 29.45. It is from the electronics, electronic components and accessories sector. As long as it holds above 29.45, it is one that could do well. Any movement back below this price would suggest to get out of that name. The next one here is, let's take a look at Etsy, Internet Services. And here it would need a breakout. In fact, it is trading right now exactly at the breakout level. But... It would need to stay above 16.88 if this is going to be a buy. Once it moves above 16.88, it needs to hold above that. The MACDs and RSIs are close to, if not already trading at three-year highs. So it meets the minimum requirement. Here, what we need is price to stay above 16.88 for this to be a buy. The other one here is a future buy. It would need to break out. So don't do not buy this. You can set an alert. So don't buy this until you see a breakout above 92.15. A breakout is what you'd want to see before you can consider this an entry level. So without a breakout, you need to ignore. And if it breaks out, it would already be showing that it meets the minimum requirements. MACDs are trading at all-time highs. RSI is above 69.1. And definitely, you need a breakout above 92.1. Two, otherwise ignore without a breakout you ignore if it breaks out then that's the trigger to go and see whether you can have part of this action and see whether you get a momentum push to the upside last one on the list again is um, another biotech related name MYOS MY okay and it needs to break out above 43 0.35 needs to break out and hold above 43.35 if it is to see higher prices otherwise without a breakout you have to ignore so don't own this until you see them break out and again here it meets the minimum requirements no problems about that that is what i spent all day trying to look for so all this do meet the minimum requirements those that have yet to break out you can ignore those that are above their buy points, they need to hold above their buy points. Otherwise, they, if they fail to hold above their buy points, they will fail. Now, I want to end this by taking a look at two markets, as I promised you, that from what I can tell, two markets that are showing signs of a pullback already. The first one, of course, is a Brazilian market, which we've been slightly, uh, which I've been trying to suggest as sell based on this line here. Going back to 2009, 2010, this is where it has struggled. So this is the EWZ, the ETF that tracks the Brazilian market. This has been a constant level of resistance going back many years. And here we see that we hit that same level and we are pulling back. Don't forget that this red line happens to be at about 61.8. So I think the Brazilian market at this rate continues to be a sell based on this line. Of course, it might eventually find enough energy to break out above the line, but we haven't seen evidence of that. All we can see is that it is down for the month and it is confirming resistance on this line, which means we have to assume 
it is looking to go lower in the coming weeks and in the coming months the other one is the Spain by way of the ETF EWP that tracks the Spanish market we can see also here signs of a potential pullback based on topside resistance if you take a look at the RSI tops here you can see that it is struggling to hold above this line already down for the month of November so this is another market that I should be focusing you should be focusing if you're looking for bearish ideas these are the markets that are already showing potential for downside now if you draw a line at exactly where this is struggling so if you draw a line right around there you can see that it gives you other major sell signal areas resistance below the line for that top and a major bear market down resistance here below the line for another top and a major bear market down and again we see a break below the line and resistance of the highs there for, and then also resistance in late, late 1999 so there's a drop here and another bear market here so right now we are pretty much looking at same type situation so at this rate we have to assume that the Spanish market or Spain as a market is looking to point down and this is areas of the market we can start concentrating our energies on if we are looking for bearish ideas so that's it for now I'm not sure I'll be able to send this before the close of the session but I'll process I will edit this process it and send it to you but I'm not sure there's enough time so you might get this after the close but the ideas are still gonna be valid this is how markets are shaping up with about 40 minutes to go Eric Mwadith, mother .com. enjoy your weekend and as always good luck peace and 